My name is Eric, this is Steven, and we are at the Cloak and Blaster. We are also just got played, and we just got done playing Hive. So I'll teach this today. Hive is a two-player abstract where you are playing as bugs. Um, you pick whichever team you're going to be on. It's going to be a little bit like chess, so it's either like white or black. They have a color version of this game as well, but the pieces are still white or black. It's just the bugs are colored. Um, but you pick whichever team that you're going to be on, and you just take turns placing pieces down on the table. Pieces have to touch your color, and they cannot touch the opponent's color. Um, and once the queen bee is out, pieces can start moving, and each piece has its own unique movement capability. The goal of the game, and how you win, is surrounding the opponent's queen bee. And a queen bee is fully surrounded when all sides of the hex are covered, regardless of what colors are surrounding. And I don't know if you can actually see that, but that would be a victory over that. At no point, um, once pieces start moving, can the hive ever be broken into two pieces. So it's kind of like an organic chessboard, but you're never allowed to have multiple boards at any given point. So that's going to be kind of how you play defense a little bit. But each of the pieces have very unique movement abilities that are what I would think is pretty equivalent to how you would sort of expect the pieces to move. The ants can move as many spaces as they want all around the edge of the board. There's a few little exceptions. Um, actually, there's really only one movement exception for the ant. But uh, then the beetles, they can move along one at a time, but the beetles get a really cool thing in that they can actually get up on top of the hive and plod along. And any piece that they're currently sitting on top of counts as the color of the beetle. And uh, so that means you can place pieces around it and all that, and you can even p and pieces that are underneath it can't move. Uh, the grasshoppers jump in a big long straight line. So as if there's one long straight line of unbroken pieces, the grasshopper jumps over all those. The spider can move exactly three spaces. Um, there's some expansion pieces in here. The mosquito can copy whatever it's currently touching, and the ladybug moves. Um, like the spider, it moves three spaces, but it can run over the top of the hive, but it has to end its movement back on the table. Um, I mean, that's it. Um, it's obviously a lot more complicated to, to play, but I mean, that's it for the rules. So, Steven, what would you say you liked about this game? Uh, you know, I really did like the game. I uh, grew up playing a lot of two-player abstract strategy games, classics like, you know, checkers, and I played a whole lot of chess. And I've kind of grown away from that uh, in the last few years. Uh, but this was a refreshing take on kind of the two-player abstract game. I, I liked uh, the different abilities that pieces had. They were really well thought out. I thought coming into this that it was going to be kind of a filler game, a small short game, and you can play it that way if you want to, but I mean really that's a there's kind of a deep thinking game here. You could spend a lot of time analyzing positions and um, so I really appreciated that uh, aspect of the game. So I think the thing that I really like about this game is that I, I do find that the way that the bugs move is, I mean, at least for me and when I've taught it to other people, I find that the way that the bugs move is pretty easy to understand. They sort of move how you expect them to. So for being an abstract game, the theme actually kind of helps you get it. Yeah. You know, and that's a, that, that, that's a cool feature in, in games. Um, so what would you say you disliked about this game, Steven? So uh, for me, and I've only had a few limited plays of it, so maybe this is just that I haven't had enough time to dive into the strategy, but I found that it was really hard for me to play defense. I would see kind of what my opponent was trying to do, and I would try to figure out a way to defend against that, and I just didn't get a good sense of how to do that. I mean, really, I could pin some pieces by moving another piece around, because you can't separate the hive, but I didn't really get any other good sense of strategic defensive things that I could do. So, you know, that may just be me and limited number of plays, uh, or it may just be 
kind of hard in the game, or maybe it's designed for offense, I'm not sure. But that was the one thing that um, I think I'd want to spend more time with that, that it kind of, you know, uh, bothered me a little bit, that it wasn't readily apparent what I was supposed to do in those situations, even though I saw those things coming. So I, to, to kind of actually riff on that, um, I actually think that is probably a, a pretty big flaw in this, and I think I've mentioned this in a couple of other things that we've played. Um, Somebody who's played this before is going to have a distinct advantage over somebody who hasn't played this before. And I am terrible at games like this. <laughs> like, I'm really bad at games like this, so I usually don't really go for these kind of things. Just because, I don't know, losing sucks. But this is a really, really neat game. Um, and I imagine that playing online with somebody who's done all the math and figured out like the best moves and optimal things to do and really gets the game, I would just get crushed horribly. So, Yeah, I mean, I didn't mind losing sitting here playing at the table, and we didn't spend hours playing it or anything either, so that, that kind of helped. So I didn't mind losing that, but yeah, playing online, I'm not sure I would enjoy <laughs> that either, just getting crushed by some Hive Pro. All right. Well, that was Hive. Um, that's Steve and I'm Eric, and we are Just Got Played. And that's it. That yeah. was Hive. Have a bug. Yeah, that's it. We're done. <laughs>